Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 21. This is all about biocomposites using flax and a high bio content epoxy with a neat product called Power Ribs which add structural reinforcement using flax fiber. The resin is a sycamine infugreen epoxy system with a high bio content and the flax is all B-Comp products, the Amplitex fiber, and the power ribs. This is a close-up look at some flax, the twill, and the biaxial. It's neat stuff. It's definitely plant-based when you look at it up close. And one neat thing about it is it's very low density compared to fiberglass. It's about half the density. And so when talking about fiber content, either from a volume fraction perspective or a weight fraction perspective, that's a, an important thing. Um, the 50% volume fraction works out to a very different weight, down, weight breakdown. So that's just an important thing to keep in mind when doing calculations with biocomposite materials. So here's a close-up look at the power rib and infused. It provides a grid structure that adds extra reinforcement to thin laminates. So here it is, laying up on the Teflon table. This is the 2x2 two two Amplitex Flax Twill. Gonna stick it down a little bit. And this next ply is biaxial Amplitex Flax. And I'm gonna stick this down next. And to create a somewhat balanced laminate, but not really, this is the B Comp Power Rib going down in 090 orientation. We'll see how stable this panel is. Uh, this stuff is neat. It's kind of hard to hold down in uh, perfect orientation, so I'm using a little spray tack. And it does have a light scrim stitch to it, which really helps with that. And here I'm putting some peel ply. But I learned later that BCOP suggests not using peel ply because it bridges over all of the little grids, as I'm finding here, um, and instead to use vacuum bag straight on top and use a heat gun to thermoform the vacuum bag film to better fit the uh, little ridges made by the, the grid of thicker ropes of flax and got the vacuum set up here now doing one of my favorite tricks making the bag too small and this is bad news this is a bag I had figured oh I'll just use this I've already got it made up so now I'm going to struggle to make it work and a bit of foreshadowing here um, this is gonna be a problem later on I'm not doing anything to clean off the table so there are probably little bits of fiber stuck underneath the sealant tape which are going to be no good and we'll see more on that later on that's an important thing to consider doing infusions is that even though you have a pretty good vacuum and maybe even a decent drop test which I'm not going to do here because I'm lazy um, you may still end up with leaks over time from very very small bits of, of uh, porosity underneath the sealant tape now I'm sucking it down here. Got it crowded right up against the edge of that peel ply. Not a good plan. It's always good to leave some space for the bag to seal against the mold so that even if there is a leak, uh, it doesn't transmit so immediately into the peel ply and then into the rest. So it's kind of sloppy, but we'll see how it goes. And about 30 degrees C for the table temperature and six millibar vacuum. You can see some crinkling and misalignment of the power rib but we're gonna go to it with the resin and mixes just like a normal epoxy with um, a mix ratio I'm doing it by weight here and going to mix it up trying not to dribble it all over the place one nice thing that's good for you doing by weight mixing is to use containers to pour the material that have nice spouts 
like old laundry detergent containers really well washed out work awesome for that but I'm just uh, doing it the, the quick and dirty way here and um, so mixing lots of mixing scraping sides in the bottom to make sure there's no unmixed resin that gets sucked in and ready to set it up I've got a little clamp that I 3d printed which you may have seen in other videos it's just a handy way to hold the tube at the bottom and I've got my little adjustable inlet clamp there which is a, a really handy thing to have so now we'll crack it open and watch that resin go in there's no flow media here but the power rib does kind of function that way and because the table is quite warm the viscosity of the resin is very low and it flows pretty quickly and I'll mark off with the marker roughly every minute I didn't keep super good track of it because I got distracted but uh, it gives a good sense of how fast it flows and so we've got a nice even flow front there definitely lagging behind on that extra unnecessary peel ply around the perimeter that shouldn't have been there should probably have only let the peel ply extend maybe 20 millimeters past the edge of the material so it's flowing nicely and I'm making some adjustments to the speed of the resin just to keep it flowing um, at a moderate rate I don't I, I know roughly the time I have with the resin gel time at this temperature and I don't want to get done too soon uh, but I don't want to go too slow either so definitely make a point of throttling the resin flow as I go to get there with plenty of time left but not not to let it really tear through especially without flow media all the air that's in there has to escape somehow and if your infusion goes too fast air the flow front can overrun air and trap air and trap moisture and then you have bubbles and that's that's no good but I'll let this one fill and yeah, yeah 400 um, grams of resin and what I did early you s the earlier in the video I showed all of the material on the scale I just weighed it and used that as a guide roughly 50 50 to make resin here I am it's full I've clamped it off and I am going to leave the vacuum at full power there it is looking at the surface you can see the bridging for the peel ply uh, it's not making tight corners around that power rib which um, you know, be nice if that were better and I turned out came back a little bit later I had a real problem down on the bottom of the panel um, there was some type of small leak and air snuck in and ran up the power rib pieces you can see there leaving little voids under the peel ply and it sure was nasty when it was finally cured I couldn't make the leak go away by adding extra sealant tape uh, fortunately it only crept part of the way into the panel so I'll still have a decent sample but you can see the air bubbles in there and it was definitely a leak from outside the bag or from air from outside um, localized just to one side but it was porosity on the back side and uh, it's a really good idea to not let that happen so here's a trimmed up piece mostly free of the leaky spot but you can see it's not super shiny there's some transfer and definitely porosity on that side where the leak was the Teflon surface is not ideal for this and certainly bagging to it is not ideal and that may also have been part of the problem because the, the any cuts in the Teflon or scratches can allow very small leaks so don't do what I do don't bag to the Teflon if you have a mold with a Teflon surface I'm pulling off this peel fly and I said the uh, the power rib is a really cool idea the idea of being able to add sort of a grillage uh, to the back side of something a very light panel and um, it looks cool and it definitely makes the panel stiffer and it's uh, the flax is a really pretty thing the twill there uh, with a nice clear coat I bet that would look pretty awesome and um, you can definitely see through see the power rib through so making real parts it's probably important to let the power rib um, fit nicely try and, and really sweat that detail 
so that it doesn't look all wavy like I've got here. But all in all, it's a, a pretty cool panel and uh, a lot of stuff I'd never used before. The thickness, uh, 1.4 millimeters roughly on the thin part and 2.6 in way of the ribs. So effective thickness is a bit more, which is nice. Uh, seven and five eighth ounces per square foot and 219 grams. And here's a look just at the peel ply side of some of the stitching. Um, it's a really nice example of what you can do with this material and uh, I really had fun checking it out. Hopefully that was useful. Thanks for checking it out and I'll see you on the next one.